Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel. This is part two of the Nintendo 64 repair and today we're actually going to work out what is wrong with this machine and also diagnose an issue with the power supply as well. So um, let's jump straight back into it. Of course if you haven't already seen part one definitely check that out first otherwise a lot of this may not make sense. Let's do it. I don't really feel like desoldering that CPU. Looks like a hundred and... a hundred pin? 120 pin quad flat pack. Not exactly the most fun thing to mess with. Okay, I see something and I can't believe I didn't see this before, but it's quite tiny. Let me just put the macro lens on the camera. There is some corrosion coming off this PIF chip, which is going down through a couple of vias. All right, sweet. Let me clean that up, resolder it, and we'll see. It's the little things. I, hmm, I wonder how it ended up. Like, the top case sits like that, and, our little corroded spot is pretty much right here. So it's not like something was spilt in here. Well, I mean, it could have been, but it's pretty funny that it's made it to that point on the board. Hmm, let's just see if we can hit it with some IPA first. Yeah, there are definitely some ugly looking traces under there. I don't have the macro lens on, but I'm sure you can see the difference. And that pops out. It pops out here and they're nice and shiny on the back, so... That's a good sign, although, what is that next to it? Going across these traces, it's like a, uh, just a bit of flux or something, but good to clean that off. We don't want to corrode anything else. But yeah, those, those vies do not look happy. I'm going to break out this little, it's like a tiny little um, Dremel, but it's good just for Removing any junk. Yeah, there's a lot of brown crap coming out of that. It is pretty much disappeared, I think. Looks like I'm just going into the board, so that trace pretty much already gone. The one next to it looks like we might be able to save, but yeah, that has been eaten away already. So I think the one next to it, focus. The one on the left, I think we can just uh, add some solder and sort of bridge that up. But the one next to it on the right yeah, has pretty much disappeared. So we'll just take a wire and see if we can get it down through that via and connect it on the back side. Might do that for both anyway, just to make sure they're uh, structurally sound. So I've just run the wire. It's going to be hard to see because it's very fine. It's like 30 something gauge, but it is just poking out through the back of the board. I move my fat thumb out of the way. Yeah, it's probably too hard to see. We'll get a close look at it uh, once I've patched it up.
it looks like the repair is done. These head down through the board, through those vires, and then actually pop back up on these vires somewhere. There's one of them, looks good. And the next one should come out here, and that's good. So repair should be done. Uh, let's have a close look. So there we go, two tiny wires heading down through those vires. The wires through the vires. And yeah, they just pop out right in the center of the screen there. All right, I've got a good feeling about this. LEDs on. No signal. No way. Freaking working. All right, we're not going to do the Donkey Kong jam just yet. So I think we've got a rubbish connection on the expansion pack. I did clean it out, but maybe it's on the board itself. Tiny little solder joints, I can't tell. Maybe I just needed to remove this half a dozen times. Okay. Yeah, look. I don't know. Is that just part of the intro? Stop changing. No controller, yeah, I know that. Well, yeah, moving the expansion pack around doesn't seem to upset it. Nor the cartridge. Just for fun, we'll see what Majora's Mask does. I'm guessing it's gonna have a region lockout. Or nothing at all. Nothing. I don't know if that's the expected behavior from a region lockout or maybe that cartridge doesn't work. Donkey Kong 64 definitely is working though. Only thing left to do is give it a proper test. All right, before I reassemble everything, I just want to answer a couple of questions. And yeah, the CPU maybe slightly warmer than before, but the other two definitely get quite hot. So I won't run it too long without the full heat sink on there, but yeah, there you go. And this guy right here, the like the video encoder or whatever it is, probably should also have a heat sink on it. Like it does get quite hot, 60 odd degrees. So yeah, I might throw a little tiny heat sink on there if I can. The other thing I want to know is to do with that 3.3 volts. So let's look back over at this regulator. And it's still receiving 3.7 volts. Hmm. Just seems high. Just gonna look. It's coming in. Yep, 3.7. And 13.2 on the 12 volt rail, so I am a little worried about this power supply still, but it seems to be working. Did I just break it then? No, it's still going. 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna obviously clean up this case a bit more just because I, I just can't stand looking at a filthy case. And um, maybe heat sink that, but I just don't know about this power supply. Um, either way, I'll get it back together. We'll have a quick play and um, yeah, see if it has further issues, I guess. <laughs> Who knows, this thing could still throw a uh, spanner in the works. Okay, so if I put a heat sink on there, it's not quite going to make contact with this bigger heat sink, um, but it'll at least, you know, there'll be more heat to be able to get dissipated. Um, so that's better than nothing. I mean, I could sort of pad it out and make it make full contact with this, but yeah, it's probably not a huge deal as, you know, Nintendo didn't worry about it, so... I don't think it's a big deal, but I'm going to put this on here just for uh, future proofing, if you want to call it that, just for peace of mind, really. Um, there we go. Yeah. All right, so the case has had a clean in soap and water, and it's been hit with a bit of 303 UV protectant just to bring back some of that shine and yeah everything still seems to be working the one concern I have is this power supply so that's what we're going to look at now because yeah I'm just not fully certain about those voltages they seem too high so what I'm going to do is open up this power supply brick and take a look inside see if there's something obvious going on so it has a couple more game bit screws and it looks like, like the screws have a bit of damage on them. So I'm wondering if this has been opened before. Um, it definitely didn't click as I um, undid those screws. Oh, there's some clips that are gonna stuff me up here as well. Uh, okay. Yeah is unplugged but no doubt this is a switch mode power supply so there's going to be a big chunky capacitor of you know 400 or 450 volts being a 220 volt unit and that's the guy right there so that could still be holding a decent amount of charge and we obviously don't want to get zapped by it so I'm going to set the multimeter to low Z mode. Um, a lot of multimeters probably won't have that mode, but you can always just um, set it to volts DC if you just want to see if the cap has any charge left. But this low Z mode will provide a discharge path for the capacitor, should it have any charge, which it does not. Um, so that's kind of boring. I was hoping it would show something. Nope. Well, okay. I don't think we need to worry about any of the other caps. There's a 10 volt one and 35 volts. They should be fine to touch unless you've got like wet hands or something. Um, okay. So having a good look here, everything looks pretty above board. I don't see any bulging or leaky caps, the tops on them are all flat. So possibly not a capacitor issue. I'm not seeing any other charred or burnt components. There is a variable resistor there. I wonder, does that control the output voltage? And in fact, looking at that, I think this will work. I think that's actually turned up. It's either turned up to the maximum or to the minimum. Yeah, it's hitting that little stopper there. So I wonder if that's maxed out at the moment 
why that would be maxed out, I don't know. Let's, um, how am I going to do this? Let's not connect it to that yet. Let's just probe the power supply on its own. All right, so I'm just going to plug it in. It is now live. We are set to volts DC. Got the pointy probes. I'm pretty sure this one over here was ground. And let's just probe, say, this top corner. 3.8 volts, so I'm just going to keep the probes there. Let's adjust this, see what happens. Aha! It is going down. Okay. So I wonder if somebody just got in here and adjusted that for whatever reason. Maybe the, um, maybe as this thing was dying, um, injecting a bit more voltage into it, kept it running longer and they found that and figured that was the way to fix it. And yeah, likewise, the 12 volt rail also drops as we turn this down. Okay. Let's hook it up to the N64 and just measure it when it's actually running. Right. It should be visible on these capacitors here. So if I probe probably the ground side, there we go. 13.2 and 3.7. Let's adjust this. System is still running. Voltage is dropping. I'm sorry, it's at 3.46. I just want to see what the 12 volt rail is doing. And yes, that's come down a lot closer to 12. So there's an obvious relationship between those two voltage rails. One seems to go lower as the other one goes higher. That's sitting at 3.31 volts. And our 12 volts sitting at 11.69. Maybe we should set this somewhere in between, I think. 12.03, 3.37. System is still running, and um, yeah, that looks a lot more what you'd expect. You know, you wouldn't expect a variable resistor to be turned up all the way from factory. So, hmm, somebody's been poking at a power supply. Um, but yeah, I have no reason to suspect any of these capacitors. I, like I said, they're not bulging or leaking or anything. And um, even though they're in a power supply, which obviously gets warm, they're, they're not that old that I'm worried about replacing them just out of replacing capacitors. It's not, not worth the hassle and could even make things worse if we pick like a capacitor that has the wrong ESR because generally in a, in a switch mode power supply, you want a really low ESR capacitor. And yeah, if you just go throwing any old capacitor, regardless of if the value matches, it still may throw out the very mm, finicky uh, switch mode power supply. So yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with the voltages. I think we can reassemble and finally play around. Eleven point nine six, three point three eight. I'm happy with that. In theory, that's going to cause less heat buildup. The system's not going to have to dissipate that uh, extra power as heat. So um, that's always a good thing, and um, hopefully should extend the life of this system, uh, especially because it was running way too high before. Power supplies unplugged. Let's just see if we get anything off this cap now. Yeah, there you go. 
it registered 11.2, but it's quickly dropping. So it was probably a lot higher than that. Um, but it, yeah, it discharges the moment you touch those probes when you're in that low Z mode. So yeah, handy mode to have. Otherwise, of course, you could just short the leads on the capacitor, but people frown upon that. They get upset when you do that. Well done! Yay! So, I've never played Donkey Kong 64 before. Um, obviously played all the Super Nintendo Donkey Kongs, but not this one. So I have no idea what I'm doing. The um, yeah, the analog stick, as typical for Nintendo 64s, is very wobbly. I actually opened this one up and um, cleaned it out. A bunch of white powder fell out of it. it looked like a scene from Scarface. But um, yeah, cleaned it out, lubricated the the bowl that this thing sits in, but. It's gonna slowly get worse, and yeah, it's already pretty bad. Um, oh, I didn't read any of that. What am I doing? Hooray! So, um, yeah, I guess that's it. I hope you, um, enjoyed this repair thing. I, um, as I said at the start, I know nothing about repairing these things, so it was a bit of a learning experience. Obviously, the, um, I've learned a few things. The red top is the expansion pack and not the jumper pack. Um, the Nintendo 64 controller still sucks. Um... I can't say much for Donkey Kong 64, I haven't played that enough. And, um, yeah, the power supply has a little adjustment to adjust the voltage out of it. And caps don't generally go bad. Um, the surface mount caps in here look fine, caps in the power supply were fine. It was just, you know, that corrosion that we had, and yeah, somebody I assume fiddling with the power supply. So, um, yeah, apart from that, back up and running. And I guess going back to the owner, um, it does kind of make me want to get a Nintendo 64 again, just so I can fiddle around with it. Maybe do a N64 digital mod or I don't know what other, other mods are out there for this thing, but, um, yeah, back to the owner and okay. we'll do something else next time so thanks as always for watching the retro channel um massive thanks to the people that support the channel on patreon and youtube memberships and um yeah thanks for watching subscribing leaving comments if you like and yeah see you in the next one Bye.